This is Table Mountain, a flat-topped mountain forming a prominent and remarkable landmark overlooking the city of Cape Town, South Africa. Whether visitor or local, it is hard to miss the striking mountain. It's unique not only because of its fame as a natural attraction or because of its distinct shape, but also because of how it was formed. The widely recognized mountain has roots going back to some of the first above water land masses, making it one of the oldest mountains on the planet. In fact, it is six times older than the Himalaya mountain range in Asia, four times older than the Alps in Europe, and five times older than the Rocky Mountains in the United States and Canada. No matter how many times you've seen it, it's hard not to be amazed at just how flat it is. But let's face it, it's one of those questions we've always had but perhaps never got answers to. The pressing question our children and grandchildren will probably ask us and their children will probably ask them and it would be rather nice to know what to say. So why is this mountain flat? The simple explanation is that around 300 million years ago, the mountain was still at sea level during an ice age and ice sheets flattened the layers of sandstone creating the flat surface that today we call the tabletop. If the rocks of Table Mountain had been made of only sandstone, they would have folded under the pressure. But the harder granite gave it strength, deflecting the forces down. Slowly, this process forced the layers of rock to rise, slowly becoming the kilometer-high mountain we know today. A more technical explanation is that Table Mountain is a sedimentary rock formation, meaning it was formed by or from deposits of sediment that was laid down in layers over a period of about 300 million years. As tectonic plates moved ever so slowly but ever so present, a collision of the plates about 250 million years ago upheaved the earth crust around the southwest corner of Africa, scrunching together multiple layers of solidified sediment about 5 kilometers thick in an elastic band-like effect. The result, a massive chain of mountains known today as the Cape Fold Belt, stretching 150 kilometers north and 700 kilometers east of Cape Town. What many people don't realize is that Table Mountain forms part of the much larger mountain chain called the Cape Fold Belt. Rock types of varying resistance beneath the Earth's surface had a pivotal role to play. There were three key rock groups underlying the Fold Mountains in the Cape Town area. Malmesbury Shell, a relatively soft sedimentary shell which is easily worn away. Cape Granite, this is formed through the cooling and solidification of magma or lava. And Table Mountain Sandstone, hardened sedimentary sandstone formed from layers of compacted sand, silt and mud deposits and composited on top of the granite and Malmesbury shale. Over the years, the folded landscape began to weather and erode, but the exposed crests of the fold eroded before the troughs did. This meant that once the hard sandstone layer of the crest was worn away, the soft shale beneath it weathered more rapidly than the remaining sandstone troughs. The shale surrounding these troughs continued to erode further and further, leaving the hard sandstone troughs behind, eventually resulting in what was once a flat valley floor becoming today's flat-topped Table Mountain. Back when it was formed, Table Mountain rose three to four times higher than what it is today. Then erosion got to work on it, Millions of years of rain and wind chipping away its tilted outer layers one grain at a time, reducing it to its inner core where the layers had remained horizontal. These layers eroded along the vertical planes formed during deposition and voila, you have a flat-topped mountain. To summarize, 
Time and the elements have eaten away at what was once a massive stack of pancakes made from different types of rocks. Today, the mountain stands at about 1,085 meters, 257 meters taller than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, and it is one of the new seven wonders of nature. Table Mountain is much more than just, well, the table. It rises up from the coast very suddenly in a huge angular mass and comprises four parts. The actual table, known as the summit, the upper plateau, the tabletop, and sometimes the summit plateau. The lower plateau, also known as the back table, located behind the table and about 300 meters lower down. The suburban side which extends south of the table on the eastern side. And finally, the 12 apostles, the 18 odd buttresses which extend south of the table on the western side. It's the summit plateau that inspired the name Table Mountain because of its flat and featureless terrain. Two subsidiary peaks are detached from the main mountain, Lion's Head to the northwest, declining northward to Signal Hill and Devil's Peak to the west. During the summer months, Table Mountain is best admired against the blue backdrop of clear skies. Ironically, it is on such cloudless days that the mountain's legendary white tablecloth is suddenly cast over the table. A myth handed down over generations would have us believe that the tablecloth is caused by a smoking contest between the devil and a legendary local pirate known as Van Hanks. The science is, however, much less melodramatic. Table Mountain's tablecloth is nothing more than an orographic cloud formation. These are clouds that develop in response to the forced lifting of air by the Earth's topography. As southeasterly winds blow from the ocean, it rises across the mountain slopes, picking up speed. Then this rapidly cooled air hits higher elevation. Condensation takes place and a thick cloud soon coats the top of the mountain, aka the tablecloth. As the cloud cover pours over the side of the mountain, the process is reversed. Clouds encounter warmer air layers lower down, where the moisture evaporates, making the clouds disappear. It is irrefutable that there are other mountains in the world that have formed in the same way as the Table Mountain. Tabletop mountains exist all over the world, often called mesas, tuyas, buttes or ambers, but arguably none is as famous as the one in Africa. Some of the more impressive ones include Mount Kona in Australia, Mount Roraima and Kukekan Tepui, both of which are found in Venezuela. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent and all matters Africa, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.